Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, and in this video I'm going to be doing something that's actually not been on my to-do list for a while. Um, not because it's an important thing I need to do, but just because it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. And that is, talk about this behemoth for a second. Now, I do have plans to do a retrospective review of the Xbox, because this is a console I didn't really interact with too much um, when it came out. I did much later. Uh, basically towards when the Xbox 360 came out. Um, but um, the whole point of this video is to show the hidden danger of these Xboxes. And that is the CMOS clock capacitor. So all over the internet there's been a lot of stories uh, and forums and stuff talking about the capacitor in these and how they can start leaking, like most electrolytic capacitors will, on vintage hardware, whether it's a console, vintage computer, whatever. And it will actually destroy the motherboard to the point where it will not work. Best case scenario, it won't hold your clock settings anymore, so every time you power it on, if it's not plugged in all the time, you'll have to just either skip the clock setting or set it every time. Worst case scenario is that it will actually corrode the board to the point where it will not function. Now, I actually have two of these. This one is the one we're going to be tearing apart today. My other one is actually still hooked up over my uh, shelf. Um... I got two of these from a buddy of mine that I used to work with at a dealership. Uh, he was moving cross state, was trying to pack as many or as few boxes as possible, and he knew I liked. Uh, at the time, I played GameCube. Uh, that was the console I had that generation. But a lot of my friends had the Xbox and was playing games like Halo and Forza. Even though Gr uh, Grand Theft Auto was cross platform, it looked gorgeous on the Xbox. So he asked if I wanted to buy him, and I said. Sure, and this was quite a few years ago. This was like over 10 years ago, actually, when this happened. I think it was right after the Xbox 360 launched, if I remember correctly. So I bought two of them uh, from him and a stack of games and controllers and the cables and everything, all the hookups. I asked him why he had two, and he said that him and his buddies would hook both of these together using the LAN link, or whatever Xbox calls it, where you can connect two Xboxes together via LAN with the identical games and have basically eight-player co-op if the game supports it, which is... <laughs> really cool, and I would love to test that out at some point. Uh, which is kind of why I hope this machine works. So one of them, I, I just plugged in, it worked, and I, that's the one I was using for the longest time while I lived at home. Uh, and then when I moved into an apartment, everything I put into a box, including the second one here, I never powered it on, I never verified if it worked, I never, anything, because the other one did. Why wouldn't this one not? And it wasn't until a couple years ago where I actually learned that the CMOS capacitor can, well, go very bad on these. So, I actually remembered I had a second one because as I was setting up this room, I found uh, this one in a box in the bottom, and it doesn't do anything. Like, I plug it in, hit the power button, and there's nothing. No anything at all. So, I think it's just so badly corroded, it's dead. Which is a crying shame, because it's, it's my own fault uh, that I didn't get, get to it, which is why I immediately tore... My good one apart, which has still worked, it just quit holding its time, which is why I got kind of nervous about it. I tore it apart, removed the capacitor, uh, I desoldered it, I didn't solder a new one in because setting the clock is not that big a deal, I don't leave everything plugged in down here, uh, anyway. And it still works just fine. This one does not. So we're going to tear it apart, see how bad the damage is, so I can kind of, sh so I, just to show how bad the damage can be if these are neglected. So let's get started. Okay, um, the next section you're going to notice that my, I'm doing a voiceover, because apparently when I was moving my camera, the microphone came unhooked just enough where it wouldn't detect the microphone was plugged in, but it also wasn't letting the, ex the internal microphone record, so there's no audio, so I'm sorry for that. Um, anyway, yeah, let's do that. Okay, first off, you need a T20 Torx screwdriver to remove the six screws on the bottom that I just pointed out. Manufacture date of 2002 from 08, or 08 of 2002, sorry. And yes, it's a very dirty machine, but this thing's been in storage forever, so the top just pops right off. There's the IDE cable for the very computer looking hard drive and the very computer looking IDE optical drive. 
we move those. Unplug your Molex connector, looks very computer looking. And now you need a T10 to get these torque screws out that hold the internals in. There's three of them. Remove the hard drive. Set aside. Remove the optical drive. Finish unplugging the power connector, which is not computer-like. Remove the IDE cable, carefully. And the power cable. And here's the inside of the machine. We have the CPU here, the GPU with its little cooling fan. Let's unplug the power connector. There we go. Let's undo the front panel stuff. This connector here. There's a little control board. It's still the T10. I'm just using a different one to magnetically capture the screws. We're going to gently wiggle this out. Gently. And there we go. We can see all the back, back of the board, which has no damage to it. There's just a little bit of corrosion right there, but nothing too bad. In fact, not even corrosion, it's just capacitor's use. This thing's actually in much better condition than I thought. And there's the culprit right there, that big fat one. But yeah, and all in all, the board's not in too bad of shape. I was expecting a lot more corrosion. Now I'm just going to basically wiggle this thing off because it doesn't work anyway so I wasn't being too terribly careful yes there's better ways it's the best way is to actually desolder this with a desolder pump or desoldering iron or do or solder wick but I decided to wiggle it off and after cleaning the board looks a lot better all the corrosion and that cap juice is gone and I don't see any visible damage to any of the tracers so actually this thing might actually work Let's get this thing put back together. Going as fast as I can. ID cable, power cable, optical drive, plug back in, hard drive, plug back in, let's test it out. So I have it replaced uh, where my good one usually is, there was my good one, and let's see if it powers up, ignore the wiring mess, I wasn't too concerned about cable management back there, it's a shelf no one really looks behind. Yeah, I'm kind of hopeful it works. Let's see if it works. Set the switch box to the correct one. The correct one's on. Ooh, green light. Oops. So yeah, that's a bummer. It doesn't work, but it does do more than it did before. It actually does now power on and now give a an orange ring, which is the orange ring of death that these consoles have, which absolutely sucks because I kind of wanted to get have two of these side by side with two identical games and kind of show the 
uh, I don't remember what Xbox calls it, like LAN Link or whatever they call it. Uh, it's still a thing today, on the, even on the Xbox One, and I think the Series X too can do it. Um, but yeah, it kind of sucks that the other one doesn't work. Uh, I'm not too surprised, I mean, even though the damage wasn't that extensive, there could be a damage trace somewhere I'm not seeing. There could be uh, any bit of the corrosion could have got underneath the RAM chip and messed with one solder pad. It could have, the BIOS chip could have just went bad. Or the CD drive and hard drive went bad. Um, when the camera wasn't recording, I did take my or I did take my good one apart here, and I did swap out a hard drive and CD drive to just see if maybe if one of those went bad, it would still work. No dice. So I'm still down to one functional Xbox here, which is fine because at least as long as I have one where I can play my collection of games, I'm fine with it. Uh, especially now since I can do more direct video game capture, I can play some more, um, more Xbox based games, which is awesome because I missed out on a lot of great games, uh, that this console had, including like a lot of the, uh, Sega Dreamcast games was ported over to this quite a bit. Uh, the, the Halo series started here, Forza, uh, a lot of the Xbox ported games looked gorgeous on the Xbox because of how powerful this thing was. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the specs of this machine in this video. That's, this was just this video was just the clock capacitor. So when you see this thing again, I'll do a more complete retrospective of the machine, the specs, the hardware, the history behind it, and show off a few games. And I think I have enough cross-platform games between GameCube, PS2, and uh, Xbox. I can kind of show the uh, differences in what the appearance was in terms of the gameplay. Because, in my opinion, even though I was a GameCube guy, and I do think the games on GameCube looked gorgeous, I can't deny that they looked amazingly, almost arguably better on the Xbox than they did on the GameCube, and easily better than they looked better on the PS2. The PS2 may have the library, but Xbox had the horsepower. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. It's a kind of a short video, uh, but it's something I just wanted I on my to-do list of stuff I wanted to get done this year, which was Terror of the Xbox Park show. Uh, the capacitor thing and how bad the damage can be. Um, if you have any comments on how I might be able to get this Xbox working, um, that'd be great. It's not a necessity I get this one working, but it'd be kind of neat to get one working, or this one working again. Um, I know there's things like mod chips and TSOP mods and that kind of stuff. I've never done any hard mods like that before, besides like patch wires and stuff like that, so it'd be interesting to try. Um, Hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload more content. And be on the lookout for some Xbox games coming, along with all the other console games I've got that I would love to get going. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.